and welcome to the IMAG pre-meeting webinar for integrating machine learning with multi-scale modeling. And we are continuing with part three of the DARPA project Cosmos, and part three will be uh, the following demo. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we will now show you a live demo of some of the functionalities that the Cosmos uh, platform offers. Uh, this is a demo that is running live on our corpus provided by XDD and the infrastructure provided by HTC. So for this, uh, for the very first uh, use case, consider you are a scientist and uh, somebody delivers you Fortran code, specifically Sanan next to me. This is Fortran code that describes, pro associated with the publication, that describes a scientific model that has to do with sediment diagenesis routines. This is Fortran code that is used to run simulations to uh, predict the out different outcomes, scientific outcomes. So you go through this program and you see, for instance, that you have several variables that are associated with quantities such as TOC, that definitely have some kind of measurements, PHAA, and so on and so forth. And as a scientist that have not seen this code ever before, you might be wondering what these quantities are. Using Cosmos, what you can do is that you can actually upload your code on our system. The system will analyze this code and recognize the entities. I'm going to skip through this step and show you the actual output in the interest of time. So what the system has done here is has identified by running simple natural language processing techniques certain entities such as TOC and THAA present in your code. And what you can do is that you can analyze these results and get a visualization like this one that will actually give you an overview of these scientific quantities. What you will see here is a compilation of different microservices running on top of Cosmos, such as question answering or related terms based on word embeddings, so contextual embeddings. And for instance, we see this answer here, what is TOC? This answer, answers to these questions are provided directly from the scientific literature that XDD is providing to Cosmos. So you can see answers such as total organic carbon associated with different confidences, as well as links to the literature where these answers were obtained from. But more interestingly, you can see diverse answers. For instance, TOC is not just total organic carbon, but it can also be a measure of productivity, which according to Sanan is a valid definition. Yeah, a good one. On top of this, Cosmos gives you several related terms. These are terms related to the term TOC, and these come directly from the literature by running models such as word uh, to vector embeddings and obtaining similar contexts. Interestingly enough, we can also provide you with summaries of observational data associated with TOC, the total organic carbon uh, values that are present uh, in the literature. Here, for instance, you see an empirical distribution that is constructed by extracting observational data directly from tables present in the literature. So by compiling all these results from uh, Cosmos, what you can, uh, a scientist can actually get an overview of this of different scientific quantities. You can see related equations, you can see related figures, and so on. So this mode of interaction can actually be generalized beyond models. For instance, if I want to answer, I can answer questions in natural language. Do that THAA one. I don't even know what that is. What is THAA? Yeah. So this question will run directly on our uh, corpus. And you can see that you get answers back that THAA is a total hydrolyzable amino acid uh, value, or it's related to amino acids. Uh, it is related with, with water uh, and, and so on and so forth. You can also try to do more fine-grained extractions for by using, again, question answering. For instance, imagine I want to identify the location of certain rock formations. I should mention that given science interest, the corpus that we're uh, running this demo on is related to geosciences. So for instance, we might want to say, where, where is black sail located? Uh, 
Black Sail is what, son of? Uh, organic rich shale. It's a fracking target. Um, it's what made America's energy great again. Uh, so you can see that we can actually, our models will return locations. For instance, in South China, you can see specifically different provinces, different types of locations across the world. All these locations are mentioned in the literature. Uh, apart from that, you can also do fine-grained uh, searches. For instance, if we search again for black sail related uh, text from the literature, uh, this will return excerpts from different publications where this term is mentioned. Uh, you can also switch to, let's say, tables. Uh, I haven't run this query before. Let's see what, if we have any tables. what it gets. Okay, it got some tables that have to do, uh, that are related with, again, uh, black sale measurements, and they are present uh, in different publications uh, that, that we saw. So having access to, or let's say, figures, so we can have access to fine-grained elements of different types of modalities about black sale. So here's a picture of, of black sale. We can see different diagrams uh, related to black sale and so on and so forth. So really our framework allows these types of reads and open domain natural language questions uh, to the users. And with that, maybe we go back to our last slide. Let's go back to So what we have showed you is how you can find principled access to scientific documents together with modern technologies such as artificial intelligence, specifically contextual, context-aware uh, artificial intelligence, to really provide automated solutions to knowledge production and provide open domain, uh, like open domain.